overthrow or anything like that, and we'll get that opportunity uh, today. So I don't, I don't really have an update as far as his availability yet. We'll know more of that, you know, today's practice tomorrow and Wednesday. Um, but he has do, done a nice job of throwing it to our guys and not to the opponent. And he's had a really good year, and, and it's certainly helped him, uh, in my opinion, uh, towards the NFL draft. Hey, yeah, Coach, uh, after watching the film and everything, what did you like about what K.J. did and uh, what did you not like? You know, he took care of the football, you know, was the first thing. He threw a few balls away. Um, you know, uh, we we had a, a lengthy discussion of, of why we are starting slow. I, I think part of it's understandable uh, with the beginning of the game, uh, with, you know, K.J. being his first – opportunity to play uh, uh, certainly many snaps at all. Uh, the halftime thing, uh, you know, we had a seven-point lead. We need to come out and score and put it to a two-point lead. We weren't able to do that. We had a lengthy discussion of why that is. Um, but I thought KJ gave us a little bit more as far as in the running game. Uh, he runs it. He ran the offense. Uh, and and uh, I just thought he did it. I mean, anybody could see he he had a great football game, took care of the ball, ran the offense, and uh, certainly um, uh, really, really proud of him. And and uh, after the game, he was very emotional, and uh, I certainly can't appreciate that. I, did, I loved everything about him on Saturday. I really did. Bob? Hey, Sam, I, I think the first time you faced uh, Alabama was probably in 2012 at Tennessee. If I'm wrong, please correct me, but you've had – you played them a bunch, you know, at different schools. How have they evolved from, say, 2012 to now? Um, and just, you know, they always seem like they're number one whenever Arkansas plays them. Well, they're pretty much number one when everybody plays them. You know, they've got a great football team. This year, their offense is just incredible. Their offensive line is the best in college football. Matter of fact, I'm not for sure that I've seen an offensive line that that well coached, and including the ones I coached, um, that well coached and that physical. And they can do it all. They can run. They can pass protect. They can get out on toss sweeps. And they play aggressively. I think it all starts. We've got two great tackles and a center in Dickinson and and uh but their offense is outstanding. Their defense is the same as it always has been. You know, the, some teams are running some up tempo things on them that um, you know they're getting a few more yards maybe than what they had in the past, but their defense is in, is outstanding. Their offense is probably as good as there is in the country. Uh, probably as good as there's been in a while in the country. They they're they're outstanding. And uh, so they're Alabama. My first time actually playing Alabama, I was at Northern Illinois uh, several years back. Um, I don't remember the year, to be honest with you, but I was there. That was the first time that we, that we uh, went to Alabama and played them. Scotty. Hey, Coach, I was wondering if you had an update on Grant Morgan. Um, what's the status with his injury? Y'all keep asking me them questions. Here's the answer. We have no idea. I haven't seen him. Same way with Felipe. I haven't seen him. Uh, we've got uh, to find out about his knee he won't practice today we'll see if he can do something tomorrow but i have no idea what his status will be for saturday at this time Hutch. yes sam even if felipe is good to go this weekend could you envision kj still playing some and then also looking forward i mean that was the first time you've really got an extended look at kj does does his performance kind of give you confidence moving forward in his future well, absolutely. I mean, the guy played a great game. Uh, certainly, absolutely. Um, 
<clears throat> you know, it's hard to say what the game plan is going to be on ifs, you know, if Felipe plays, if he doesn't, things of that nature. But certainly KJ's earned the right to play some ball and, and Felipe's earned the right to be our starter. So we'll just kind of go from there. If Felipe can't uh, practice early in the week, well, certainly we have no no problem at all going with KJ. If he can, then we'll, we'll make a decision sometime during the mid, mid port of the week. Otis. Yeah, Coach, uh, I don't know if he was hurt or not, but Monterey Brown, was he injured some Saturday? I saw Malik playing a lot in the fourth quarter. He was, and again, that'll be something that we'll just have to see how he, how he does today and how he moves forward uh, throughout the week. But, yes, he, 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 had, he was beat up a little bit on Saturday. Dudley. Coach, you mentioned a couple of weeks ago about hidden yards in the special teams game. Can it kind of judge the special teams this year and maybe what's going to be the biggest emphasis, uh, you know, as you go into the, the rest of this season and next season? Well, we, we'd like to make some extra points, you know. Uh, we'd like not to get a field goal blocked. We'd like not to get punch blocked. And so all those things, I think we've had a couple of punch blocked, a field goal blocked, blocked and we missed some extra points and uh, those things affect the outcome of the game they affect uh, the way the opponent calls the game they affect the way we call the game uh, so you know at this point in time in the season when the depth is getting thinner uh, you know it, it really shows on special teams more than anywhere else um Certainly, you don't want to, you know, if you're if you're playing, you know, the way we play our offense up tempo, uh, there's chances that the defense is going to get more reps. And, of course, it's their responsibility to get off the field, too. But uh, with that said, uh, at times, your corners, your skill spots on defense, it's hard to play them on a lot of special teams as well because they're playing a ton of reps on defense. So, uh, in the future, uh, we certainly have to upgrade our depth there. Uh, our, our punting, kicking game has, has got to be better, and uh, we'll work on that. But it's not schemed. We're not getting out schemed. We're not any of those things. We're just, we just have to continue to get better in that, in that aspect, and, and we have to obviously be able to kick the ball through the uprights. Thanks, Coach. All right, let me know if you've got more questions in the chat. Fish out. Coach, what concerns you most about Alabama? <laughs> um, stopping them. I mean, I don't know that anybody has. And, uh, again, you know, everybody struggles with a team that can throw it and a team that can run it, you know. Uh, we proved that we're a little bit better with a team that just is a throwing football team, you know, just – but when, you, when you're when you able to do both, like uh, Missouri was able to do both and, and like Alabama can do both in, in the best way possible, uh, those guys are scary. And so uh, Barry and his group uh, are trying to scheme up a way to, to slow that – uh, potent Alabama offense down, uh, and then we, you know, to 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 uh, win the football game, we're going to have to score on offense, and uh, their defense is very hard to score on, and uh, as it always is. Uh, but the concerning part is, can we slow them down on offense, and then our offense is going to have to score some points. Trey Biddy. Coach, uh, maybe the last question on, on the Missouri game. But after, again, re-watching the, the game, what happened in that fourth quarter on defense? Is it a lot of things? Is it simple stuff? Were you gassed? What, what, do, you, what uh, do you think happened? Uh, no, they whipped us. I mean, uh, we had lost the edge a lot during that game. Uh, we lost the edge uh, on on a couple of long runs in the fourth quarter. Um we were trying a lot of different things, Trey. We were trying some zone coverage, and they would throw it underneath us on some quick outs, some 
uh, quick stop routes. Uh, we'd try some man coverage, and we we couldn't cover them uh, man to man, and uh, we couldn't get pressure uh, on the quarterback on third down. We couldn't get off the field. I know it seems like a, a story that we talk about all the time, but really, um, they got some momentum. Um, I thought that uh, we didn't tackle well. Uh, losing Grant Morgan probably hurt us a little bit, a little bit in the fact that, you know, he, he's there for alignments. Um, but the bottom line is uh, they out physical physicaled us uh, in the fourth quarter. And, you know, I thought there at the end we stole the game from them, but we, 42 seconds was too much time and they went right down the field on us. Bob. Sam, I should have done my research better. Were, were you at, at Northern Illinois when you guys went in there and beat Alabama? And um, if so, that must have been a pretty good memory. And then, you know, they're, they're skilled people, you know, Jones and Smith and Harris, if maybe you could talk about them a little bit. I mean, they're incredible. I mean, they're, they're as good as anybody has. And, and I mean, they got a Heisman Trophy quarterback. And they got a, uh, Harris. I mean, he's as good a running back as people have. They're they're talented as they can possibly be on offense and and defense as that matter too. But I mean, they're just a hard team to slow down. And uh, yeah, I was at Northern Illinois when uh, we were able to go into Alabama and, and win that game. I bet that was a pretty sweet memory. What what, what do you remember about that? I remember we scored more than they did. I, you know, I, you know, that was a long time ago. Uh, I just, I'll tell you what I remember. Uh, by 10 o'clock in the morning on Monday of that week, Joe Novak was the head coach, and we always have our run game up by 10 a.m. in the morning. And we had a good team. We'd beaten Maryland that year, and I think we'd already beaten Iowa State, or that was right after that game. And we always had the run game up and we always were starting drawing cards and all this. And Coach Novak walked in at 10 o'clock and there was not one run on the board. Not one. We couldn't find one run that we liked against the Alabama defense. And uh, he said, well, heck, Sam, you got to put something up there, you know, figure it out. And, and uh, we ran a little pin and pull play and we had Mike Turner who played with the Falcons for a long time and I think he rushed for 150 yards that day and obviously a historical win for the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Tom. I covered that game and Bob just took all my thunder right there. It was 19 to 16 and the burner Turner a great Falcon had a big game. Um, my question was Alabama's staying power near the very top of the SEC. Just can you speak to maybe what, what that means and maybe how difficult it is to stay up there like that? Sure, it's, it's difficult. They have Nick Saban. I mean, the guy is probably, and you can argue whatever you want, but probably the greatest college football coach of all times. If he's not the greatest, he's one of the top three, and that's it'll be hard to argue that one. Um but with that said, it, you know, he hires great coaches. He's got a, a system that he stays with, and he, they are recruiting machines. They, you know, they're going to go out and they understand that players are, are difference makers in your program, and they do a great job of recruiting. But they keep a system, and you can see it because, you know, there'll be different coaches come in and out because they have success and they're able to go get head coaching jobs and things of that nature. And the university doesn't change. And that's all because, in my opinion, because of Nick Saban and, and his system and, and the man and the knowledge that he has. Scotty. Hey, Coach, I saw on Saturday you guys elevated Myron Cunningham to a, a captain. What have you seen from him this season and why was he the choice there? Well, the team voted him. You know, you need four captains, and we, that's what we thought. And so we voted in um, – uh, another captain and the team voted on that. And, uh, I was, I was so pleased and so happy that the team voted him in, you know, his mother and father, 
I went to his first college game on Saturday. And uh, once we had found that out, uh, and then he was elected the captain, then I wanted him to go out and represent the team because his mom and daddy were uh, at the first college game. I thought it was a great moment. Uh, he's played well. Uh, we're going to get his uh, NFL evaluation when he comes in, and then we'll let him decide what's best for him to do. Uh, but he certainly has elevated his uh, opportunity to play in the NFL if that's what he chooses. Thank you. Coach, looking at the, the depth at corner, do you anticipate Jarquez and McClellan coming back to the team? Have you guys talked about it at all yet? Um, and just, like, how do you feel about the depth there? And could that be a position you might look for someone in the transfer portal? Um, it certainly could be a position, Nikki, that we look for uh, a transfer portal. We don't know, but certainly could be. It's one of those uh, on our board that we're going – could we allow a scholarship in that position? Uh, certainly uh, could be. Uh, I really don't want to talk about the situation of guys that opted out and their uh, opportunities to come back to the team uh, at this at this time. Uh, we'll, 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 there'll be better times uh, uh, to visit about that later. I want to talk to, uh, to the kids first. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, depth-wise at corner, uh, it has been – uh, fairly light all year. Some of it's been COVID problems. Some of it's been injuries. But I think the future there is going to be fine. Uh, but sometimes, you know, we, our depth has been a little bit of a problem. Hutch. Sam, uh, at least on Pro Football Focus, Ricky Stromberg graded out really high against Missouri. What did you think about his play and how have you seen him progress uh, throughout the season? Uh, Ricky's a fighter, you know, he's gotten bigger, he's stronger. Uh, he's going to just continue to get better and better because he works at it. And he played against a really good player on Saturday too. That guy, you know, he threw him around a time or two and Ricky threw him around a time or two. But, you know, I thought our offensive line played really, really well. And I think Ricky's a big uh, reason for that. He gets everybody on the same page. And I think Brad, uh, Coach Davis, moving him to center has helped him not only uh, for the success of our team, but for his future in the, in the National Football League. I think that'll be his spot. Two more. Bob. Sam, uh, um, Alabama's won like 97 or 98 or some crazy number against the unranked teams. They just never seem to – let anybody slip up on him. What, what do you think about that, that stat? I mean, it's incredible. I mean, I think Clemson's got some things going at this point, you know, that are, have some unbelievable numbers over the past, I don't know, several years. Uh, but Alabama's Alabama. And uh, we're really excited to have the opportunity to play them. We really are. I mean, uh, if you're going to get a real measuring stick of how far you've come in a year's time, you might as well go play the best team in the country and see where you're at. And and uh, we're excited for the opportunity to do that. But for them to be elite uh, for the number of years they have been is uh, incredible and a tes testament to their coaching staff, their players, and, and Nick Saban. Last one, Tom. My question is a senior day question. Um, do you have a solid number on maybe number of seniors you'll have back next year? Will those guys go through the ceremonies you guys have on Saturday? How will that play out? We've talked to uh, briefly to some of the guys about, you know, sure, we'd love to have you come back, but that won't be uh, decided, obviously, before senior day. So we don't see any problem if the guys end up with two senior days, but uh, we don't know exactly who who's going to come back next year and who's not. So every senior on our team will will uh, go through the ceremony before uh, before the game. All right, that'll wrap us up. Thanks, Coach. Okay, guys, go Hawks. All right, questions. Uh, everybody, good.